Been with, um, I want to welcome Coach Abe and uh, her family to Athens, our new women's basketball coach. I know uh, Mary Beth and I are looking forward to meeting her and her family and uh, just excited to have them here in Athens. It's certainly a event we like to attend uh, their home games. So we'll be looking forward to meeting her. Uh, today we finished up practice number uh, eight, I believe, and uh, we'll have nine uh, Saturday. It'll be our first scrimmage. Um, thought our guys really competed today. And that was the challenge to have about a two hour session before the scrimmage and, um, and get better. And uh, the guys are growing. Uh, we're getting a lot of young players reps. I don't know that I can ever recall a time where we've had so many first year players, actually mid year players that are getting valuable reps. You know, most of the time those guys are coming in your door, sometimes going with the threes. Uh, we got a lot of them going with the twos and uh, just shows uh, the excitement that they bring, but also the kind of what we're trying to work with to get better. And I think the kids are, are doing a good job of that. She's seen some good leadership signs out there and excited to kind of see what happens Saturday because coaches go off the field and, and find out who can tackle. Yeah, I think we got a lot of guys stepping up. Uh, I think Pop's doing a great job stepping up. Um, you know, Cedric Van Pran, Warren Erickson are guys that continue to lead up front. I think Rogers tried to take on a, a little bit greater role. Kiaris continues to do that. Uh, Nolan has been tremendous at, uh, at being vocal when things aren't going right. Um, Keithy has done a good job of that. So there's a lot of guys. Um, you can just see them trying to assert themselves and encourage uh, more than um, discourage. I don't know what you mean by style of punt. <laughs> yeah, it's just punt. <laughs> he's just punting. There's nothing special about what he's doing. So uh, I think when you think of Australian, you think of rugby punt where they roll and punt. But you know, from from obviously watching it, that's that's he can do that, and that's something that we'll explore. But that's not what we're working on right now. We're just working on our different protections, uh, different looks, checking protections. Uh, and allowing him to kick under pressure. That's the thing that he has not been able to simulate is you know, kick under pressure and uh, replacing uh, Jake Camarda will be key. I thought he hit some good punts today and he hit his directions, which is important. If you got a punt left, you got to hit it left. If you got a punt right, you got to hit uh, right. We call it our field zones. And I thought he did a good job of uh, doing that. So far this spring, he's been um, he's been a pleasant surprise. You know, he's probably not where Jake was last year, but he's he's done a really good job. He's he's had a smooth transition. A lot of reps. I mean, they've had a lot of body of work. I mean, Truss, for the most part last year, you know, doubled as a guard tackle. He's continued to double as a guard tackle with some injuries we've had um, at the offensive line. So he's been forced into some tackle reps, but primarily he's gotten guard. Uh, Willick has gotten a lot of guard reps. Uh, Warren Erickson continues to get guard reps there, although we've gotten him a lot of center reps. Uh, Dylan Fairchild's got quite a few. Michael has come on and had some good practices. So, you know, it's it's a great competition among a great group of guys and to see what they can do. Devin and um, I think Xavier probably provide us the most size in terms of length, girth, not necessarily all weight. Michael's done a good job there. And, and Dylan, Dylan's had a sprained ankle and he's really competed. He's had uh, missed a couple practices and, and got back out there and has pushed through it. Uh, to the point of getting healthy. So he's, he's done a good job. Jerry, looking at Saturday's scrimmage, just from the quarterback as a whole, what do you want to see from the group or change you're looking for? From the it never changes with the quarterback, guys. You could come here in 10 years from now, it's going to be the same thing as it was last year. It's decision making, accuracy, leadership, intangibles. I mean, you know, great quarterbacks are accurate and they make good decisions. And if you can make good decisions and be accurate and you, you got good football players around them, then you're going to be you know, a pretty good football player. 
Uh, I want to see them execute the offense, lead the offense, make plays with their feet when things break down, things that are difference makers for them, and um, and overcome mistakes because there'll be some adversity out there. But uh, the good thing is those guys get an opportunity to do that every practice. Sometimes in a scrimmage, you don't even get put in bad situations. In practice, we're going to uh, manufacture tough situations, and, and they get to do those. The biggest uh, hurdle for him has been the conditioning level. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is like learning the playbook and the conditioning level. Um, catching balls, that's not like, like he can catch balls. He's a good athlete. You know, he he, uh, he came back a little heavy and he admittedly would tell you that. He's done a tremendous job of being in our cardio club and dropping weight. Probably, you know, I, I'd hate to say, I don't know, somewhere between 65 and 70, 265 and 270, and he's dropping. and. Um, you know, like what's happening right now, he's starting to make more and more plays, but he's having to really work his stamina to be able to sustain during practice. And I mean, like play after play after play after play, he has to take it. It's like, oh man, I got to condition myself to get back, go again, burst and run. Um, but I've been you know, pleased with he, uh, Brett and uh, uh, Oscar have taken a tremendous load on, have gotten a lot of reps. Well, I think confidence has helped, and I think he learned from some really good leaders. You know, Jamari and um, and who am I missing there? Uh, Sailor, well, Jamari and Justin. The, both those guys were great leaders. I think he learned a lot from them. Um, he has to continue to learn to. You, you got to be productive and physical yourself. The one thing about those two guys, they were extremely physical. They enjoyed the contact part. The run game came easy for them. Um, that for Broderick, he has to really work and strain at that because he's he's a really good athlete. He's a long guy, so pass pro is much easier for him. But the run game, he has to get his pad level down and strain to become a good player. But he's trying to be uh, more positive with the other guys and encourage them when there's mistakes. Because you know, two years ago he was that guy, and uh, he's he's. He's growing into his role, I think. Um, back on Avery, you heard some mention with the tight ends and you know, with his wide receiver room. I, I know it, how much of that might not matter because of how tight ends are used nowadays, but what is your thinking with Eric with the tight ends and where do you see him? Well, we just think he's a tight end. I mean, at the end of the day, it's last year. Uh, it was probably a greater deficit. It was uh, something that he 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 wanted to be more wide out. He also was much lighter, you know. So he he he's a little heavier now. He's more physical now. Um, he's he's a tight end. That's that's what he's probably going to develop. You know, there's a certain requirement as a receiver it takes to play receiver in terms of stamina, uh, running every play, going to cutoff block. You know, at tight end. Our tight ends are receivers. They do play receiver, but they don't go out all the time, split out wide, and that's something that he was having to do. And he's comfortable in the role he's in right now, and he's 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 really, like, he's got all the ways to go. He has not arrived, but he's come so far from not being able to execute a play to being able to execute a play, know what to do, and then hurry back and get the call in the next play and line up. I'm just proud of the way he's he's fought to learn it. You know, he's, he's, he's fighting stamina out there because he's taking so many reps, and, and I'm really – just pr pleased with his growth. You had the dominant playoffs before about how he's handled those last two plus years with injuries and then coming back. What do you think has allowed him to be more like so Oh, he's wired the right way. You know, I mean, this kid uh, came up tough. Uh, he's had two older brothers that uh, helped, you know, toughen him up. He didn't grow up soft. He's not afraid of contact. He never complains. I mean, he just doesn't complain. And if anybody has something to complain about, it'd be him. All he does is work, and um, you know I, I, he's probably still not to his electric in terms of uh, uh, vertical speed, but he's really savvy route runner. He, he does really well in the slot. He just made a play in two minutes that was a, a big play, a diving catch that set the offense up to uh, to win a two minute situation. I mean he's he's getting better and he's getting more confidence in that knee, and um, I'm excited to see where he goes. But more more than anything, I'm excited to see him get out there and play because. Our team takes on a lot of his resiliency DNA, and it's something we sell our players on. Kirby, um, I, I was talking with Team Nagy about how your program's progressed and how you've kind of put your fingerprints all over how it's changed. I guess he said put your spin on it. Can you give me an example where a, 
anecdote or maybe how things have changed since you've taken over the program or different ways maybe you've kind of evolved this program from where you started? I really can't. I mean, I don't like comparisons. You know that. I don't like comparing one thing to another. Um, and I don't really know much about how it was before because I wasn't here. Um, we take a lot of pride in trying to do things um, well in terms of our discipline, toughness, all those DNA words we talk about. And we've tried to do that for a long time. And it wasn't just me. It was the, the first staff I hired and the men that left helped set that standard. And the men that have come in have continued that standard. But I don't know that there's a, you know, a glaring example. It's just day-to-day -day hard work. And if you work hard each day, then you'll you'll sign good players. Um, your kids will graduate, and you hold them accountable. That's that's what you try to do to develop a good program. And I think we've started to to do that. We've been pretty consistent, and that's one of my big pet peeves: is how consistent can you be in your performance and the way you work? And it shows hopefully in wins and losses, uh, and also the players we develop. Yeah, CJ Washington had a really tough injury, and um, I actually didn't see the hit that happened. It happened late, almost right out of bounds, and I turned to walk away and heard some oohs and ahs. And um, then he was, you know, face down at practice. And I thought our medical staff did a tremendous job getting to him quickly. Um, he he was concussed. Um, he's got a neck injury, and we we don't. We don't know the complete severity of that or the length of time it'll take to recover. But what we do know, he's got you know all his extremities. He can walk. He was out at practice today. He's 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 going to be in a neck brace for a while. Um, but he's got a great spirit. I mean, he's smiling, laughing, cutting up over here every day. He misses it. But I don't know what that timeline is for recovery. He's he's meeting several doctors tomorrow, so we should know more. Uh, and EJ Lightsey uh, has, has come up and seen us. I know with his coaches a couple times and, you know, had a, had a really unfortunate incident, incident where he was, you know, kind of a innocent bystander and uh, got hit by a stray bullet in several of them. So he, he's actually very lucky uh, that it wasn't worse. And according to Ron, it was an inch from, you know, probably getting in his heart. And uh, he's just a tremendous kid from going down and recruiting him. And everybody in the community talks about him. And it's a, it's a really tough situation. But think he's going to have a full recovery and be able to start with us and fine in June. Got time for two more questions. Compared to last spring, how has Carson Beck grown? What do you sort of, what are his strengths that he brings to this team? Well, I think he has a really good composure. You know, Carson's never up, never down. I think that's a great quality on a quarterback. I've seen, you know, guys that are emotional and up and down like a roller coaster. He's pretty even keel. And to be honest, most of our quarterbacks are. There's no, uh, there's no guy out there that, that, loses it one way or the other, but he, he does a good job being very even killed. And um, I think he understands the system. You know, he's uh, another year in the system, so it comes natural to him. He's not nervous about what the huddle call is, what's my read, what's the motion, what's the shift. He's very cool, calm, and collected and does a good job uh, of managing those things with the offense. So I think he's he's earned some confidence and, and earned some confidence with the players. I'm sorry, I missed the first part. Um, how has that balance between playing the offense and the special teams been impacting your recovery? Yeah, um, I, don't, I, I mean, he, he played special teams before. So he, he's continued to play special teams. He's actually taken on a role at the end of the year last year where he worked on kickoff coverage. He works on punt return. He works as the returner, but he also works as uh, other roles on the punt return. So I think he's developed more confidence about playing receiver with the contact he's had on special teams. A lot of times special teams gets you back going when you've been injured because it gets you the confidence to get on the field. Um, and he played you know, some roles on special teams for us at the end of last year. And, He'll continue to do that, and if he's the best guy, then he'll be out there to play. But I'm excited about what he can do for us at receiver, too. Thanks. Thanks.